You've probably seen the sun rising in the morning and setting in the evening. But is it really true that the sun comes up when the day begins? Is it really true that the sun goes down when the day comes to an end? Not really. Perhaps it's just an expression. Our Earth experiences two different motions. One is rotation and the other is revolution. The Earth spins around on its axis and it takes one whole day to make one full rotation. That's about 24 hours. The Earth's axis is slightly on an angle, which is currently about 23.5 degrees. At the same time, the Earth revolves around the Sun. It makes an elliptical orbit around the Sun, and it takes one whole year to make one full revolution. Now that's about 365 and a quarter days. So, the reason why we have day and night is because different parts of the Earth are facing the Sun during different times of the day. Here's an example. When it is daytime in Ontario, Canada, it is nighttime in Berlin, Germany. Canada is currently on the side of the Earth that is facing the Sun during its rotation. Germany is on the other side of the Earth that is not facing the Sun at the moment. You might wonder, then why do we have different seasons? This is because the Earth moves along an elliptical orbit around the Sun. Also, the Earth's axis is tilted with respect to its orbital plane. For the Northern Hemisphere, when the Earth's axis points towards the Sun, it is summer. When the Earth's axis points away from the Sun, it is winter. For the Southern Hemisphere, the same factors are reversed. When the Earth's axis points towards the Sun, it is winter. When the Earth's axis points away from the Sun, it is summer. To understand this, here is an analogy that you can try for yourself. Take a piece of paper and also a flashlight. Aim the flashlight straight at the paper and you will notice an illuminated circle. All of the light from the flashlight is shining within that circle. Now, slowly tilt the paper. The circle of light will elongate into an ellipse. All of the light stands within the ellipse. However, the ellipse is spread out over more paper. Therefore, the density of the light drops. In other words, the number of square centimeters increases, while the total amount of light stays the same. Now, let's compare this back to the Earth again. When the sun shines from directly overhead, the light falls straight on you, resulting in more heat hitting each square centimeter of the ground. When the sun stands lower in the sky, the light that reaches the Earth gets spread out more over its surface. Less heat per square centimeter is then absorbed. As the Earth's axis is tilted, the sun is higher when you are on the part of the Earth where the axis points more towards the sun. In the same way, the sun is lower when you are on a part of the Earth where the axis points more away from the sun. Looking at the northern hemisphere, the axis points toward the sun the most in June, specifically around June 21st. This represents the summer solstice. The axis points away from the sun the most in December, around December 21st. This represents the winter solstice. For the southern hemisphere, these two parts are reversed. For both the northern and southern hemispheres, however, the Earth stands 90 degrees away from the Sun around March 21st and again around September 21st. Respectively, this represents the spring and fall equinox. On this day, every location in the world has 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. And that marks the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed and make sure to like and leave a comment down below and share the real story with others. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more videos like this. See you in the next one.